All right, so let's move on to look at how to identify QSS species. That's a very interesting topic. Uh, and the, the, the key problem to identify QSS species, uh, uh, because you know, I, I talked about two uh, conditions right before the break, small concentration uh, and, and, a, and a slow cons uh, uh, creation rate. Those are obviously, you, you can have bad example for that. And there's a third one people sometimes use based on time scale. So then we think in the literary, literature, if you check, people use so-called lifetime. Lifetime basically uh, de determined by the, the, the consumption rate. If you have fast consumption rate, whether that's a sufficient condition to define the QSAs, QSSA. And here comes a bad example, which is PEA. So PEA give you a counter example for this. So that means not all the fast reacting species are in quota steady state. If you look at this example, you get a slow species A, form B and C. There's two isomers that can go back and forth very quickly, right? So you, you find B and C are both fast reacting. They have a short time scale. Uh, or in other words, they all have fast consumption rate. And they have fast creation rate also, right? That's why B and C are in uh, partial equilibrium. But you cannot approximate both B and C in steady state because that will give you wrong solution. Because if you approximate dB is equal to zero, dB dt is equal to dC dt is equal to zero, you will, you will obviously get dB plus C equal to zero, which is obviously wrong because B plus C is formed through uh, reaction uh, from from this slow reaction from this one with a non negligible rate okay so therefore if you uh, if you misidentify a partial equilibrium uh, induced fast species as qssa then you will have a large error in your solution so so, so therefore this tells you it's not a, a sufficient condition either to to see uh, all the species with short time scales are in quota steady state. So now we talk about three criteria, none of them work actually. And the three criteria are all have been used in the past. So well as we said uh, as we said in the skeletal reduction part, so it's not always, not always the case if you use bad criteria, you always end up with, with wrong mechanism. But the problem is that if you have bad criteria, let's see if you somehow only check the time scale for the species. You identify a subset of, uh, for example, 10 or 20 quota steady state, state species. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it doesn't work, right? But you have to do sensitivity analysis to figure out whether your identif identification is correct or not. That will cost you a lot of trouble, a lot of time. Okay? So what you want is you want to find a method you can trust. You said, I run this method, it tells you this is the steady state species. You don't have to do the validation. <laughs> that's, that's very important. So if you can do it, you don't need to do sensitivity. Otherwise, you need to do sensitivity analysis to spend the time. Okay. Uh, so in the following, I will, I will show you one methodology how to identify this. Let me just, just, just uh, this, this one I want to show you. This one tells you uh, if you somehow identify a bad one as a quality state species, how bad it can be. It give you a large error. Okay. So this is the example actually have been used in the previously published paper for methane. For methane, uh, in the literature, you find all different reduced models for methane, right? People assume different QSS species. Uh, so in many cases, people assume, like for example, CH3OH to be quota state. Sometimes CH2CO, these two quota state species. But here I plotted uh, the y-axis is the, the ratio, the QSS solution versus the real solution in log scale. Uh, as x in the 1D laminar flame coordinate. So this, this was computed in the 1D laminar premix flame. So computed with premix, the premix code. Uh, what you can see here is before ignition, this uh, is a bad QSS species. So if you assume it to be in QSSA, you are in big trouble because this will give you a factor of 10 error. So its concentration is totally wrong, okay? Uh, this guy will give you large error away from the ignition point where the reaction zone located. You see here, pre 
the ignition, the fresh mixture, this one give you a factor of uh, almost 300, uh, three order of magnitude difference. Uh, post ignition, this one give you two, three order of magnitude error. So, so if you find a wrong QSS species, it can give you very, very large error by orders of magnitude, okay? So what, it, what else it can affect? You, know, you can never know, so you can never guarantee. So just, just try not to get wrong QSS species, that's the key. Uh, what we do here is basically we, if we want to find a QSS species, we want to make sure there is no PEA uh, giving you the trouble, all right? So because the QSS species, you know it must be fast, okay? So who can be fast? So if your species is fast, uh, it goes somewhere, go to a sink. It cannot be fast forever. It, if it gets choked upstream, it quickly goes down the concentration and it becomes a quantized state species, right? But somehow if it goes fast to somewhere and it comes back fast, then uh, it, it may not be in QSS state. So then you look at uh, this A go to B, B and come back to see whether you form some kind of uh, group. This group will give you a slow motion, okay? So for example, you get a two container, container A, container B. If this can go back and forth very quickly, uh, you treat them together, you know, A plus B, their total mass is conserved or is slow changing, right? So therefore, uh, what you can do is, uh, uh, if, you th if you think QSSA, it involves some, some behavior, it just, no matter what happened, it quickly dies to zero, to small concentration. So every QSS species is a fast mode by itself, okay? But in PEA, in, in, in partial equilibrium reactions, so each reaction is fast this way or this way. So that means the difference between the two. So A minus B is a so-called quantized steady state variable. So A minus B, A minus B must be small because the two containers must always keep in a similar level, level, right? But if you put them together, the, the A plus B is slow variable. So a PEA, it has something to do with the fast mode. It also has something to do with slow mode. So what you can do is you can do the CSP decomposition. Uh, and you, you, you go through this procedure, this is a CSP procedure, right? You decompose the mode into fast mode, slow mode, this block diagonal matrix. And then there's a projection matrix Q, which is A, the, f the fast uh, column vectors. This is the fast row vector. This projection matrix tells you, it's like a filter. If you, if you projection, project the rate to mode, what's the percentage go to the fast space? What's the percentage go to the slow space? The diagonal elements of Q tells you how strong the channel is. If you look at the diagonal elements for this matrix, if, if this matrix is not trivial, if, if it's not a, almost zero to the slow space, then the, the, the species must have something to do with the slow modes. So you can assume those those guys in quarter steady state species. So physically, any species, whether it's slow or fast, if it, it has any business to do with a slow space, that's not a good QSS species. So physically is that. Uh, and the, the remaining then uh, is if you find a species, it only projects to fast space. You can safely assume it quickly decays to zero, always. You can prove this easily mathematically. It can be approved, that's why it's safe to use, all right? So therefore, based on the projection of any species to the mode in CSP space, we can eliminate the possibility that the fast species is induced by PEA. So this way, uh, because it's a proven method, we can, we can easily find who is fast, who is small. Uh, so this is number of species identified in, in GR3, and this is a threshold value. Like this threshold value is what is the percentage of projection to the slow subspace. So here you can see, uh, if we take 10% error, uh, error tolerance here, that means if you have any business to do with, uh, with the slow business more than 10% from here to here, we don't assume it's in what a steady state. So only those guys which, which is strictly projected to fast space, we can assume they are in, in steady state. So this is a mathematically based methodology. It's conservative but it's safe to apply. So we never see any single example because it's proved. 
not any single bad example from this method. So after this method developed, we never bother to validate it anymore. So <laughs> right now, the quantized state state uh, identification and the so solution for this uh, equations are all fully automated. So we just click a button, that's it. So, so right now we just don't validate this after reduction. Uh, <coughs> this is another example for, for, for an inhabitant. So this roughly tells you a story. In, in 60, 70 species mechanism, how many of them are strictly for the steady state species? Usually, uh, it's about 10, 15 species. That's pretty, pretty much what you can have for regular fuels, whether it's, it's methane, ethylene, or it's large hydrocarbon fuels. If you get an inhabitant, if you get an endodecan even. So it, it don't have a lot of quarter steady state species. But if you see some reduced model with, let's see, 50 quarter steady state species, uh, the chances you will find some, some of the solutions, it, it will give you a raw solution, all right? Uh, how wrong it will be wrong, or how much error it will give you to your actual CFD simulation, it depends on different cases, okay? But just, you just don't trust 50 QSS species. You can easily find those are very badly wrong uh, solutions. All right, so once the, the, the QSS species are identified, or well, the remaining part is how to solve them. Mm, so those equations, if you look, it's in general because it's a chemical kinetics, it looks like it's a linear problem. But actually, we dig into this, we find these equations. In most cases, it's, it's approximately linear. Why it's linear? Uh, if you uh, let me see, when, when, uh, somehow I, the sequence is again. Let me go back to this one. The, let me go back to to to, to this one. This one tells you, uh, as I told you before, uh, any QSS species must be in low concentrations, right? So this is this is from mathematics due to the fast consumption rate. Uh, if it's in low concentration. If you see reactions involving two or three, whatever, more than two QSS species, it must occur through collisions, right? But if this guy is in low concentration, if this guy is in low concentration, the collision frequency between these two cannot be large. Although they, are, they, they must have low activation energy, but they don't have a chance to collide with each other. So therefore, uh, any quadratic terms in, in good QSS assumption, it, it usually is very small negligible, is high order small terms. So if you get rid of all the quadratic terms, the remaining terms are linear. <laughs> so, so, so therefore we find quasi steady state approximations, those algebraic equations are linear functions. Once they are linear, you can solve them, for example, using Gaussian elimination if you want. Uh, but then if you look further, they are sparse linear functions. Now, very sparse linear functions. What if you want to solve these linear functions, you can solve them. And what we, the, the method we use to solve those linear equations is based on graph theory. Uh, so we, we generalize the, for, the format for QSS equation. If you look at this equation, uh, for every QSS equation, you get a linear function, right? Linear equation. So the consumption rate you put to the left, di is a large number, means you have fast consumption rate. The accretion rate, you involving whatever other QSS species you put on the right hand side. And this is constant time, constant terms which involves non-QSS species. If this one is a constant term involving only major species. So therefore you get a, a general form like this. If you get a general form like this, you can, you can, con you can transform these equations, a set of a linear equations, into a graph, graph theory. So, so that's another use for graph theory. It's like solving this set of linear equations. It's sparse. And what we can do is, you know, in high school, when we solve this kind of equation, we use elimination of variables, right? We find uh, a short equation to get rid of first. Uh, then uh, we solve less number of equation. We find another variable to do substitution and el elimination. And we can use graph theory to, to automate this procedure by transforming this kind of uh, coupling into a graph. So, so if, you, if you want to solve this guy, if this, if, if this concentration has him and him on the right-hand side, you put an arrow here. So, so what you can do here is that you can transform this linear equation into a graph like this. So whatever species appear on the right-hand side of this guy, you put an arrow there. 
So that means if you want to solve this, you need the information from him, right? If you want to solve this, you need the information from him. And this is a graph uh, for ethylene, for a, for a 32 species ethylene model. Uh, if you want to solve this through graph theory, an interesting, uh, interesting algorithm we can use in graph theory is the so-called uh, topological sort. <laughs> the topological sort is, the meaning is it's quite straightforward. For example, if you look at this, this is, this is a diagram showing how topological work, uh, topological sort of work, working. Um, if you, if you, for example, if we get a six QSS species, all right, so their coupling is like this. So you know this one requires this, this requires this, this requires this. These three form cycles. Whatever cyclic coupling forms, you have to solve the group altogether. Okay, so therefore these three guys, you need to solve them as a core. These two are coupled with each other, you need to solve them as a core. And this one is coupled by itself. So, so if you can solve his contribution first, you can solve these two next. And you can solve the third group, the third. So therefore the topological sort, it did two things. Once it give you the couple of small groups, and then you solve group by group. In this, this way you can, you can systematically derive the, the very efficient solution, almost the efficient, most efficient solution through uh, very, very well established graph theory. So if you are interested in this algorithm, you can look, up, look at our paper to figure out the details. But this is roughly the idea. It shows you in many cases we can, we can borrow a lot of very good algorithms from discrete mathematics or, or, or uh, computer science to just to help us to solve some of the difficult problems in combustion. All right. And this one we can, we can skip. So therefore, uh, if we put skeletal reduction and, and QSSA basic reduction together, so basically we can go through all this procedure. If you get a detailed mechanism, let's say 500 species, it goes through DRG, it goes through sensitivity analysis, and you can do some further reduction by looking at which reaction is not important to anybody in the skeletal model. So you can further re remove some of the redundant reactions from the skeletal model. It eventually gives you uh, a smallest skeletal model, let's see, with 70 something, something species. This one you just ignore it. It's isomer lumping. We, we, we don't have time to describe this. Then you go through time scale based reduction to find an analytical solution for the equation. So it will eventually give you a uh, analytical solution for a reduced model, so <laughs> based on QSSA. So, so for this hepten, we got a 52 species reduced model. Uh, so here, here is an example validation result. So uh, if you look at this, this chart, this is PSR extinction. We always validate PSR and autoignition. So this extinction time uh, as a function of the equivalence ratio for PSR. PSR is 300 k inlet hepten air. And this is extinction temperature. So basically, extinction temperature temp and time is uh, the turning point, right? the turning point. And this is ignition delay time, because Hepton has NTC behavior, the ignition delay time for different pressure, 1550 atmosphere, lean stock temperature case. You can see the, the circles are reduced and lines are, are detailed. So the uh, agreement is quite good. If you go through the reduction, you know every step we used, you have well-controlled errors. So that, therefore, we can guarantee the final reduced model has the worst case error within the tolerance we specified. Okay. And this is, a, uh, this is the extended validation. So we do the reduction based on uh, autoignition and a stir reactor, and then we extend this, we just apply this reduced model to 1D laminar flame. We never found an exception. So, there's never a single case we find that we do the reduction based on PSR and autoignition. It fails the 1D flame simulation. The error may be slightly larger. Let's see if we specify 2030 error tolerance, we may get a uh, sometimes even a smaller error for flame, but sometimes marginally 20, 25% error. But you, you never get a factor of two totally messed up flame speed, right? And this is, this is a flame structure uh, for 1D flame temperature profile. O2, fuel, water, CO, CO2. So all these are major scalars in the solution. And these are radical profiles. Again, these lines, solid lines are the detailed, and circles are reduced. And you can see, if you get a well-controlled error in the reduction process, the solution should be very accurate for both major species and for minor species. Okay. Uh, that will give you confidence when you use this reduced model in other cases. Uh, uh, here are some uh, 
some of the example applications we have been uh, doing with collaborators. This one we did together with the Air Force contractor. They are using a reduced ethylene model to simulate a scramjet combustor, uh, which use a cavity to stabilize the flame. And they, they use this one to hold the flame. So this is a very interesting story, because in, in that, that's more than 15 years ago, and people have been using a four-step model to try to simulate this flame. And you know those four-step models in old days, they calibrate everything based on ignition delay time or flame speed, okay? But they never calibrate based on PSR extinction. But when you try to predict flame holding, whether the cavity is good enough to hold the flame, when you have the blow up, blow, flow, flame blow up happening, those are extinction problems, right? Uh, if the reduced model doesn't predict the extinction behavior well, you, you will mess up the flame holding prediction. And that's what happened with the four-step model, five-step models. And uh, later they asked us for this reduced model and we give them this uh, 19 species reduced model for, for, for ethylene. That one together with, we done with Professor Law. Uh, and this is a company performing the simulation. Eventually, this one agrees quite well with the experiment. So from that time on, a lot of Air Force contractors, Air Force people are using our ethylene model. <laughs> Today they are still using it. Uh, although we have better models developed today. Um, uh, this is uh, also an ethylene model developed for a premix, uh, premix flame, premix turbulent flame. Uh, so this is in collaboration with the Suresh Manon in Georgia Tech, so to predict suit formation in, in, in turbulent premix flames for ethylene air. Uh, so the suit model was quite, quite, uh, quite pre preliminary, so it was it was, it was uh, like a two equation model based on acetylene and suit precursor. You know, this is very empirical, but uh, using our reduced model, then you, get a, you, 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 you feel a lot of confident, confidence in predicting the flame dynamics, flame shape, and how it, it, it works. Uh, we have a lot of interesting story about this, but if you look at the structure here, you find the structure of the premise flame is it's quite uh, disturbed, okay? And today, uh, we did a lot of more simulation, just like uh, yesterday we showed you a DS result for even stronger turbine premix flame for dodecan. You find a lot of interesting problems here in it. And these turbine flames, you have to be able to predict the, the upper turning correctly. Or the burning, a lot of the burning occurs around those regimes, okay? And this is a premix flame uh, simulated by Jackie Chen also at Sandia using a reduced methane model. And this is, pre, pre, this is the earliest uh, uh, model. We, we use the QSSA solution for them. So, yeah. Um, if you can do the previous slide. The previous one? Yeah. Was this like a two-phase model? Yeah, this is a two-equation model for suit. It, it's Peter Lindstedt's suit model. And then the particle, uh, particle formation was agglomeration and collision? No, no, no it's a, a two-step two two -step model. It's a two-equation model. There are no moments in it. Uh, you don't assume there's a different physical process. Just uh, inception, coagulation, the detailed models. You, usually you get a moment, you get a mess of moments coupled with uh, many different, different processes. Uh, let me see, in his model, oh, he, has, he has a few processes involved. I think ins inception model he has there, based on settling, inception model, uh, inception model, let me see. Ins he, he has inception model, Co coagulation, he should have it, the part of the coagulation, and then oxidation, oxidation based on OH concentrations. So I think that's the equation, three or four terms there, not, not all the different terms. So we're right, right now, we, we try to use more uh, number of moments. We use method of moments, like we use four or five moments, then uh, coupled with this, so, so, uh, even, even, even more detailed processes, we can get, a, we hope we can get a more physical solution, but still you get a difference by order of magnitude from the experiment. So right now there are a lot of uncertainty in suit models, but, but this two equation model is, is kind of uh, empirical. Uh, but this, this, this flame is uh, one of the earliest we did with premixed flame, premixed turbulent flame. It roughly gives you the right dynamics for, for the flame structure. And this is a premixed flame for Jackie Chan. And so it was a reduced one uh, for, 
based on GR 1.2. So it was quite aggressively reduced because that time they can only afford, uh, let's say, less than 15 species. <laughs> uh, so this, indeed, this was 13 species reduced model at that time. Uh, and the model was tailored only to predict premix flame, correct. So today, if you want to use GRM model, don't use this one. <laughs> I can tell you, it doesn't, it doesn't capture the, the, the extinction turning right. Okay. Uh, ignition delay is totally wrong. There's no ignition chemistry in this one. It's only 1D flame. So the, 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 the flame speed is right for this one, for the particular mixture. But other things, no, no guarantee. So today, we have a lot of better ones. With 19 species, you can get almost everything correct. But this is, this is a weakly turbulent flame. So you can approximate this flame, uh, a Benson burn. This is a slot Benson burn, a premixture coming from here, uh, hot product. And this is a wrinkled flame surface. You can, you can use flame lit model to approximate this flame. And people have been using this to, to, to study premix flame lit models, even. It's good approximation. So flame speed is, is probably the only thing that matters for this flame. And this is a non premix ethylene flame together we did it with, uh, with uh, Hong Yin and, and several other groups. So I know you guys from COS, you may have seen some of these pictures later. They have a published picture for, for the same simulation just, just last year, two years ago, for shooting flame, that's ethylene. So it, it, it's, it's based on this, uh, a reduced uh, ethylene model. So this, this reduced model was, um, Mm, from from ABF mechani mechanism uh, with pH with with poly ar polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons as suit pre precursors. So it's quite detailed model. This is what we said about this uh, method of moment coupled with uh, very detailed physical processes. Mm. Uh, this is two D HCI performed by Jackie Chen's postdoc. Uh, this is. So Trinsan did this simulation for HCCI because they want to use reduced model to, to figure out how, how you can control the ignition or, or heat release rate in HCCI applications. If you make non-uniform temperature field, so some are ignited first, some are ignited next, then you can spread the heat release rate to different time, right? Hopefully we can use this so-called thermal stratification to slow down the heat release. And he ran this simulation uh, but in 2D cases, basically, he, he figured out a lot of parameters that can, can affect uh, how fast heat release can, can, can change. So, so temperature fluctuation, whatever, all matters. And also, uh, in, in this simulation, basically, yeah, if, you, if you look, so equivalence ratio is extremely lean. For HCCI, typically it's 0 0.3, 0 0.35, or even 0 0.2 something. So, so that's typical for HCCI. For such lean mixture, you pay attention to the re model reduction. Because if you, if you get a very lean mixture, your reaction tends to slow down, okay? If it slows down, a lot of the, the slow processes become important. Because if you get a fast chemistry, the slow guys you can throw away. But if you get a lean mixture, so you find your model need to be larger. So that's, that's the rule of thumb. So it's more difficult to get a small reduced model for a slow reaction systems. If you get HCCI, that's one difficulty. So, so that's why we, we changed this reduced model from 52 to 58 species. We added a few more species to make sure the linkages are correct. Okay. And this is one we showed um, yesterday morning. It's 2D lifted uh, ethylene jet flame. So ethylene jet premixed uh, injection into co-flowing co air. Um, Oh, no, no, it's, it's, it's a non premix it's, it's, it's ethylene in, in center, so co-flowing air outside. So you get, a, you get a, a lifted flame. So where the lift off point, roughly you can see somewhere the flame is lifted off, right? And this is scalar dissipation rate, mixture fraction, and some radical concentrations for more high concentration. Uh, so when, when you look at this uh, flame structure, you will have a lot of questions because DNS, once it becomes possible, it gives you a lot of detailed information. Uh, temperature, species concentrations, and a lot of this concentration, sometimes it helps, sometimes it can give you, uh, can bother you, because if you look at two fields, they, they give you different shapes, right? If, if you want to compare these two, where do you think the flame is stabilized? <laughs> From different plots, you see different pictures. So it's very complicated to analyze uh, simulation results from detailed chemistry. So, so that's why uh, 
uh, even after reduction, the post analysis still need a lot of, lot of post pressing methodologies. We are working on methodologies to do this, but we need a lot more. Okay, but today you know uh, the computer time, computer power keep on growing. So <laughs> one thousand times every ten years. After a few more years, we get even more time, computer time. Uh, and also, you, you consider 10 years ago, people think if you get a 10 million CPU hours, that's huge, right? 10, 10 years ago, like Jackie Chan at that time, we, if she get 10, 20 million CPU hour, hour, that's a big deal. But today, it's uh, hundreds of millions of CPU hours. Uh, and the, the larger one, 600 million CPU hours, even 1,000 million CPU hours. You can imagine with, with this powerful computer, with this long time, how much data you can generate. Uh, how would you get information from it? <laughs> and where do you store this result? The, the, the problem is uh, the supercomputer today can give you much more data than you can possibly store on your hard drive. You don't have the hard drive to store it. So if you cannot have a <coughs> methodology to, to process those results immediately after the simulation, then you don't have a location to, to save those, those data. <laughs> uh, this is actually, this is, is happening to us already. <laughs> so my collaborator is, is working on DNS. After he run millions, millions of hours simulation. And after they, they just delete the file from the computer without doing anything, I can tell you. <laughs> it's a DOD computer. It's, it's a total waste of, a, waste of a money, you know. Because when they run the simulation, they calculate how much money actually they cost. It be millions of dollars. Uh, <laughs> So when I ask him, could you give me some, some of the snapshots at this time and this location, I want to dig into this. He said, I need to, I need to rerun the simulation for this part. <laughs> this is what happens, and this is state of art. And we are waiting for something to process those data right now. Maybe you guys can start working on it to find something just systematic for this data. We don't, don't need to save everything. We just only save the useful ones, right? Useful information, critical information. Uh, whatever we will need for our study. How to understand those flame structure, dynamics. Uh, we just don't save the raw data anymore. So <coughs> it, you, you cannot possibly save all of them. And this is a simulation for a lifted diesel flame. Uh, it's a collaboration with Argon National Lab, Sibino Sam in Argon. He was using Converge. You know, Converge right now, they are using very good solvers. Uh, almost linear time. The, their server was developed by Lawrence Livermore. So Ma, uh, Ma, Matt McNally, he developed a very good server uh, based on preconditioning. So, so, so converge using their server, uh, they can possibly accommodate a large, uh, let's say, skeletal models with, with even 200, 300 species into their simulation of a 3D uh, diesel engine or, or other simulation. So, so, so we could possibly reduce our biodiesel model from 3,000 to, let's say, about 100 species. This one, this one's good. Mm, this one, this one's about 100 species. I didn't forgot to put it there. Oh, here, so 115 species, right? So, so this is a RAS simulation result. The lift-off length, lift-off lift 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 off height, LOL, uh, flame length, if you compare with the experiment measurement. It's a RAS simulation with detailed, detailed uh, or with a skeletal model. Actually, it's quite good compared with the experiments. It's not a magic. Right? It doesn't tell you RAS is correct uh, for this case. It just happened for this flame, because diesel flame, you get a, a lot of mixing, uh, non premis flame. For this particular flame, it just, just this, this model, together with this uh, reduced chemistry, it works quite well. Uh, not only for the flame shape, but also later, for even for some of the suit formation, the geometry, uh, the location where suit peaks, all this, this information is captured quite good. Mm, and these are some LES simulation, uh, RAS simulation versus LES, LES simulation in the same one. But using LES simulation, you can figure out a lot of more detailed structure uh, today. And this is very interesting. This convert, we have work on this software. We can use very fine mesh to simulate this one. Right now we can use, because it's mesh is adaptive, they can use very, uh, powerful adaptive mesh, AMR, to, 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 to resolve the flame structure down to almost 50, 60 uh, microns. That's all already close to a lot of the DNS resolution today. 
So therefore, this subgrid model are quite quite good already, very accurate. So it tells you sometimes with a powerful computer and also reduced model with good solver, you can do a lot of uh, good things with improvements. Okay. Uh, okay. So we <laughs> this is this is another fun part. Reduce the high cam. I can only talk a little bit because this is a work in progress. Uh, we still have a big program, a big team working on this model. Uh, you know, Hi Professor Hai Wang, he developed this, this uh, systematic, systematic approach uh, to develop high cam models. So we briefly mentioned yesterday, the idea here is uh, for high temperature uh, combustion problems. If you, if you, if you look, look at those uh, large molecules, those large molecules, it cracks very quickly through beta station. Beta station, you know, at high temperature, is very fast, right? It quickly go, goes to those uh, small molecules, ethylene, uh, propene, isobutene, methane, methyl, hydrogen, etc. You get a super uh, cracked product. The so fuel cracking typically is uh, endothermic. It, uh, it absorb, uh, absorb heat, right? In a lot of cases, you can even take advantage of this, this fuel cracking, the fa fa fast fuel cracking to cool down something you want to cool down. For example, in hypersonic propulsion uh, application, in, in scramjet, so people use this fuel lines. You, you, you roll them around this combustor, you can cool them down. So, because you cannot carry this coolant right, with you for, for scramjet, but you can cool them down through fuel cracking. And then the fuel cracking will give you ethylene. So heated ethylene can burn even stronger. So it's a, it's a good deal. So basically, you burn ethylene as a, as a cracking product in a combustor. Mm, and then at the same time you cool down the, the wall. So for high cam, uh, we can even take advantage of this fast fuel cracking. We can lump them into several global steps to model those fast cracking processes. And therefore you can use quite a small model to, 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 to describe what happens at high temperatures. Basically you use global steps for fuel cracking together with a quite detailed core for C0, hydrogen, C1 to C4 subchemistry. So, so uh, the detail of high cam developed, basically it's only about 120 species, that's it, for, for the real fields, jet fields, uh, and dodecans, whatever, just large fields. Possibly you can also do this for, for gasoline fuel, for diesel fuel, for high temperature applications. Uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you want to see how much, how much, uh, how much saving you can have, in terms of uh, number of species for this. So what we can show here is, uh, this is a bar plot for number of species as a function of a number of carbon atoms in the molecule. So this one tells you large molecule, how many, how many C12, C20 molecules you have in the model. This is the, the recent Lawrence Livermore model for, for, for a jet fuel surrogate, so two methyl alkenes, basically. Uh, if you look at this one, it's, it's quite big, 7,000 something species. 30,000 reactions, one of the largest ones out there. Okay, so, but if you look at this <coughs> molecule, uh, the majority of these guys are large ones with 20 to, let's see, five, six to 20 carbons. Okay, and these large guys, some of them are fuel, very small number of them are fuel, probably get a 20, 30 possible fuel molecules. Okay, but the, the remaining part are those fuel radicals, those uh, cracking products, intermediate species. So you, you get a huge amount of them. So several thousand intermediate species for fuel cracking there. All right. Uh, the core for the oxidation for H2, C1 to C4, is only here. It's just a little corner with about a few hundred species. That's all. So if you can lump all of this into a large core, of course, of course, this has some, some NTC chemistry here, but even get rid of NTC, you still have a huge chunk of them for high temperature beta station cracking, okay? So, so if you can lump all of this into uh, one or, or a few global steps, you can, you can reduce from several thousand species, just go to one or 200 species, that's all. This is probably the most effective way to do model reduction. So far, we don't have any other reduction which can do such a dramatic extent of reduction. Right, a factor of uh, 100 on this, a factor of 50, a factor of 100. What we did before was from 3,000 to 100. That's already, already dramatic. This one can go from 
less is a few thousand go to hundred. That's that's dramatic. Okay, mm, and this is how it looks like the lumped fuel cracking reaction. Basically, you get a fuel molecule. Uh, depending on what fuel you use, you, you have different carbon numbers, different H numbers in, in this. And uh, after cracking, it goes to this, this different products, right? It is the ethylene, uh, propene, uh, one butene, isobutene. He, he doesn't have isobutene in this formation, but later he added isobutene because it's important for branch alkenes. But later, uh, but if you look at this one, this equation shows what happens for thermal pyrolysis. Okay, so because fuel cracking, you can have thermal pyrolysis. Sometimes you can have H radical or a radical attack this uh, molecule to give you H abstraction. So this is a radical assisted uh, fuel cracking. If you have a radical attacking the fuel molecule, this activation energy is much lower. So these are the major cracking pathways if you are having this in flames. But this can possibly be important if you get a very high temperature and also uh, start from scratch. If you have auto ignition occur at a very high temperature, this could be important, okay? Thermal paralysis and radical assisted H abstraction followed by uh, beta station. Uh, and those, those coefficients, like uh, those coefficients, if you look at all these coefficients here, uh, you need to measure those, those coefficients through experiments. So what you can do is you can do shock tube experiments, do flow reactors, do whatever, uh, to figure out after fuel cracking what is the form. So you measure the product formation, then you can calibrate those coefficients. And those coefficients should also satisfy element of conservation. So conservation law together with uh, exper experimental measurement will give you these very accurate uh, coefficients. And those coefficients are <laughs> directly from experiment. So it, at once the experiment is good. You bypass a lot of uncertainties for those tens of thousands of reactions, those rate parameters. So, so, so therefore, this small number of reactions, it doesn't necessarily to be less accurate compared with the larger model. It can be even more accurate. So compared with the experiment matter, this model actually work, works very well, uh, remarkably, okay? Mm. <coughs> so w we, have, we have been uh, uh, working on this high cam reduced model because we, we can apply skeletal reduction on this high cam model as if it's a, a regular mechanism, right? You can also apply DRG on it to figure out who needs to be retained, who can throw away. You can also identify quarter steady state uh, species from this. Then you can, you can apply QSA approximation to it. And then, for example, for this, uh, for, uh, for this, this is for endodecan, I'll give you an example. Uh, endodecan, we start from, from a jet, for de jet surf detail model. Uh, so after lumping all the few cracking reactions, it's good to 123 species, okay? So this is roughly the, this is probably the first high cam model uh, we have. And later he has a lot of this uh, high cam model for real jet fuel. This one is for endodecan, but this one is the, the first one. Uh, you can see this time is, it's published. Mm, and then we apply the reduction for, you, for we again sample autoignition and third reactor for different pressure range, different equivalent ratio, different temperature range. We go through this reduction procedure, it ends up with 31 species. For m 2 if you imagine this is 31 species, it's similar to ethylene even. <laughs> okay, so, it, so you don't need 30,000 species to, to, to do it. Uh, on the 31 species is for skeletal. With QSSA, it goes to 24. Remember ethylene, ethylene is 22. Okay, m 2 24. <laughs> uh, and and we, we validated this reduced model against the detailed jet surf, detailed jet surf, okay? Uh, so, so, so detailed jet surf, lump to reduce, this is a high cam model basically, this is a reduced one. Uh, you, you can see this agreement is remarkable this is for extinction behavior, auto ignition delay. So this is only selected validation for a phase equal to one. For other cases, it's all the same. This is, this is extended validation. Because we have sensitivity analysis involved in the reduction, we do need to validate every possible thing. So flame speed is a validation. You know, this is a, this is a counter flow extinction for non premixed flame. The extinction S curve. So this is a counter flow premix extinction curve. You can see all these models agree quite well uh, to 
with 22 species, <laughs> you can just do a lot of things similar to, to, to this much larger models, okay? Uh, and then this is some, some of the recent work we did for real jet fuel. It, it, it was part of the work for uh, the National Jet Fuel Combustion Program, NGFCP. Um, it's a work in progress, so I cannot talk too much about this work. Uh, this result was just published, and we just presented this in the national uh, combustion meeting, so we can show this result here. Uh, the detailed high cap model for real fields, the three real fields, we have this uh, internal naming for this. Let me just explain a little bit. The cat A2, A2 fuel is the jet A. So what, you, what are being used in commercial jet, uh, co commercial airplanes, jet A, that's uh, the jet fuel. C1, C5 are two alternative fuels. You know, uh, previously people are having this, this uh, renewable uh, concept for energy sources, right? For jet fuel, we're talking about to, to, to rather than getting from, from oil, from petroleum, whether we can get from other biomass or from uh, synthesis, even gasification process. You, so, so we have different jet fuel from different sources. So cat A, C1 is very special. C1 is a, is a, is a fuel similar to isooctane. It's highly branched. It, it was a synthesized so from small molecules. So the process gives you highly branched alkanes. So this isoalkanes, almost, almost is pure, uh, just pure <laughs> isoalkanes, all right? So therefore, for ignition property, this guy is very different from this guy. The ignition properties are very different. Uh, but high temperature burning, if you put them to jet burner, jet combustor, you find it works like charm, so no big deal. Right? Uh, we explain why this, this is the case. <laughs> yesterday's lecture, because high temperature burning, uh, terminal combustion, the f flame lean blow out is all relevant to the upper turning. And different hard carbons, whether it's branched, al al branched al alkane or it's normal alkane, it makes little difference for the upper turning point. They're almost the same. But for the lower ignition turning, they are everywhere. So if, you, if your burner depends on the ignition curve, you are in big trouble to change fuel, okay? But if you design your burner running on the upper branch, <laughs> you, you will be very happy, okay? Uh, C5 is similar in chemistry to A2. The property is very similar, but C5 is also from, uh, from a renewable source. So, so detailed high cap 119 species, okay? Uh, and this model was, was obtained by calibrating the coefficient against a lot of shock tube experiment data. So down at Stanford, in Ron Hansen's group. Uh, skeletal model, you can see, for, for this different model, you get about 40 to 30 something species in a skeletal level. Reduce one, 26, 31. So it's very small. With 20, 30 species, you can have a real fuel reduced model to put in your CFD simulations. For real fuel, it's not for surrogate, not for endodecane, but this is a real jet fuel <laughs> with the real stuff. Okay. Uh, and so this is the validation, of course, this, this validation is it's reduced versus a detailed high cap. So it's no surprise the reduction error was, was controlled. For ignition delay, PSR, these two are included in the reduction. So this, this, this should be correct. And this flame speed is extended validation. So flame speed, uh, flame, flame speed so for CAT, CAT A2, C1, C5, okay. Uh, so these two are ignition delay for different, three different fuel. Uh, this is a PSR extinction for different fuels. Uh, you can see flame speed, of course, agree quite well. And this is our counter flow extinction. Counter flow extinction, this, so these are non, this row is non premixed flame extinction. These are premixed flame extinction. So uh, different pressure, different fuels. You can, <coughs> see, you can see the extended validation is also very good. So the lesson we learn here is, is for high temperature combustion, Kinetics is very simple <laughs> with uh, 30 species. You can do a lot of things, make, but try not to use one step model. You know, one step model, you still get a five species or even more, and you don't save that much of a computational time, but the, the result will be totally wrong, okay? So this figure shows uh, the, the reduction error. So why we end up with about 30 species? Uh, can we further reduce it? So, so here we showed the, the error curve uh, we obtained in the sensitivity analysis step. So 
you remember we, we do sensitivity analysis, we try to throw away somebody, we measure how, how much error it has. So this is, this is what happens. If we get rid of the species, error increases a little bit, it increases a bit. So we have the sequence. Uh, every time we do sensitivity analysis, we, we rank those species. We throw away each individual species to see how much error it gave. And then we sort all those errors, we get rid of the first one. And then we rerun everything, we do this again, we get another one. So each elimination with a lot of computation. Okay. Um, but then you have this curve. So what happens is you, you find uh, there is a certain stage. Beyond this, the error will grow quickly. So that is what happens is in the skeletal model, when it goes to about 30, 40 species, everybody is already important. If you look at those species, for more than you cannot get rid of them, right? For more than HCO, uh, CO, CO2. If you, if you use your hand, you can easily name 20, 30 species. If any of them is gone, you will see a big error somewhere come, comes out. Somewhere, okay? So that's why uh, at a certain stage, if you start deleting more species, you will get a jump in errors. That's when you know you should stop. <laughs> no further reduction. So we, we stop here for A2, stop here for C1, stop here for C5. Uh, and this is our final reduced model. So, so, uh, <coughs> so, so the, 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 the reduced high cap model, it turned out to be to be highly efficient. The, uh, but then a lot of argument comes out. Say that what if I want to use reduced high cam model for IC engine simulation? Let's see for diesel engines. You know, for diesel engines, it's not that simple because you get a low temperature ignition problems, right? Uh, you do need to worry about the, the low temperature stuff. And uh, there are a lot of ar arguments, see whether this high cam, this concept is valid or not at low temperature. And even if you can use it, whether you can add some kind of a low temperature pathway to make the NTC behavior correct. And we, we tried a little bit. So we tried a little bit. I will show what we tried here, but don't trust this too much yet, OK? I can, I can show you some good, good, good validation results. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the method will be valid. I will discuss further. So what we did is we start from endodecan again. Uh, so this Yao, the Tong Yao, he, he, he visited me uh, about two years ago. He worked on this project with re reduction for this. Uh, it's based on high cam chemistry, the jet serve reduced model, but also he added the lump NTC chemistry. He used, uh, uh, the, he used about the, the 10 step semi global model for NTC from the previous liter literature. So, so Norbert Peters, the lump NTC steps. And then what he did is he tuned those NTC rate parameters, try to make the ignition delay correct, okay? So it's, it's, a, it's like a, a reduction together with tuning. So wh whether we can make, make a, some kind of hybrid model which can predict endodecan for both high and low temperature. Uh, uh, let me show you the, the size. So detailed model, of course, uh, the previous one, you know, uh, jet serve about 190 species, right? So he, he for, for, for the C0 to C4 chemistry, it's about 30 species. But he needed to add a few, a few intermediate species to take care of the NTC chemistry in the high cam. So, so therefore, these are added, about 18 species. And the NTC substeps are, are lumped, semi-global. So these are tuned. Eventually, the final, final one is 54 species. Okay, 54 species. Uh, in skeletal level, and if we do call that steady state approximation to go to 37, it's still quite small for, for endodecan with NTC. Remember what we did before for, if we only use previous method to go from large level more, we, we stop about 100 species. That's, that's the skeletal size. This one is half, so it's much smaller, okay? So this is a comparison. Uh, so, so first of all, the, the lines are, uh, so the lines are the, the prediction from the, the, the large detailed model with thousands of species, species from Lawrence Livermore. So, so by the way, we, we tuned the NTC steps, so first of all, against the experiment measurements. But you keep in mind the experiment data are very scarce. You, you don't have a lot of experiment data to use. But if you don't have those many data to use, what can you do? If you 
tune only based on two, three, four set of data, you will get a just overfitting problem, okay? Uh, but we just cannot do it. What we do is if you don't have the experiment data there, we use detailed model to fit against. But you have to do the tuning for a very wide range to avoid this overfitting. Uh, so, so, so here, the symbols are, are largely more, large one. Uh, before tuning, it's, it's this one, this the dashed line. So the, the solid line is upper tune. So basically this shows tuning is very effective so, so this one was a number of Peter's 18 step without tuning. So after tuning, it agrees quite well for all different conditions. Lean, South Cambridge Ridge, uh, you, you see for, for this 20 bar, 50 bar for all different cases for ignition delay time. Also keep in mind, this tuning is only for NTC chemistry. It only changes the ignition delay time in this area or everywhere else is not affected because the high temperature ignition delay is, is controlled by by the high temperature part, it's not touched. Okay, so therefore this was tuned, tuned, mm. and then uh, what we further did is we use this tuned model to do uh, converge prediction for lifted diesel flame. So basically to compare with the experiment and to see what happens. So so without tuning, you see it start to go go up from here. It just shoot all of the chart without tuning. But with tuning, this do this does a lot of better job for ignition delay time. So ignition delay time in diesel flame means what time is the first stop, so the first spot gets ignited in the whole field, okay? So, so you see after tuning, the safety simulation give a much more reasonable uh, prediction result, okay? So and then we further tune a little bit, one of the, the NTC, uh, one or two of the NTC step, make sure this even, even agrees a little bit better. So, so the, the engine combustion people is very happy about this result because it, it agrees a lot better with the experiment measurement, okay? Uh, actually, a lot of people are happy when you see good, good agreement. So you, after tuning, you see the, the lines strike through the data perfectly. It looks very pleasant, right? Uh, it's, which is totally under, under, understood. We, the feeling is understood, but we, we, we have to, for, for us, if we do model reduction, we have to keep in mind that tuning will not get rid of uncertainty. Will not get rid of uncertainty. It pushes the uncertainty to somewhere. If you don't push it out of the chart, it's somewhere in the corner in, in this, you shift it to a different place. It just doesn't show up here. If you change a different condition, it will show up. Okay. So the tuning <laughs> is not as a solution. Okay. Uh, so this is laminar flame speed. Because laminar flame speed basically is not touched. It's a, it's a high temperature combustion problem. Remember, flame speed was controlled by high temperature chemistry, not low temperature chemistry. So therefore, flame speed doesn't matter much with or without tuning. Uh, uh, and the flame speed prediction is quite good. If you can see the data, data were from all different groups. Uh, and the, the lines were predicted. You see, so this is the jet surf model, the detailed jet surf model. This is the reduced model. The reduced model even works a little bit better. So magic, you know. Uh, <coughs> uh, but but this, this is another case with, with different temperatures, 470K, 400K. But, but these are extended validation. So tuning was, was not against this one, but it just shows for a high, term, high temperature chemistry, the high temperature part was inherited from USC Mag 2, the jet surf model. So therefore, the high temperature chemistry is already there. It's quite good. Mm. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we showed you it's probably possible to combine high chem model with NTC by tuning NTC steps. Actually, uh, I think Hai is also working on this. He, he tried to, to, to get this done. It, it looks quite promising. Uh, also, although so far we still cannot explain because the high cam concept, the fast fuel cracking uh, assumption is supposed not to be correct at the low temperatures, right? But due to some reasons, uh, it, it doesn't mess up the results. Okay, <laughs> so there can possibly be a good explanation. We just didn't find a uh, completely what causes yet, but it's it's possible. All right, uh, but besides that, the most the most important thing I want to say is not try to persuade you to try to use this high cam model, 50, 54 or 30, 37 species for for diesel combustion or for HCCI combustion. Uh, 
uh, I want to see more about this overfitting issue. So the overfitting issue probably I think is I would give it a number two, number one, number two. Let, let me talk about this after this break. Okay, let's take a 15 minute break. Then we, we discuss this very important topic uh, when we come back. <laughs>